Kenichiwa, year two, and that's hello in Japanese. Now, what we've got here are some words from the story from Lila and the Secret of Rain, but they are all missing their suffixes. Now, remember, a suffix is a group of letters you add to the end of a word. So the suffixes in here are in blue. So we've got est, fully, li, er, uh, there's another fully, there's a ness, and there's an est. Now, your challenge is to find these seven words in the book and match them to their suffix. So I'll see if I can move one around. So there's care, and if we pull down fully, that makes care fully. So I've done that one for you. Your challenge is to find the others and write them in your book. All of those words appear somewhere in the story, but with one of these suffixes on the end. The TRP for today is can I describe a character's feelings? So yesterday we looked at the character of Lila and we did a profile about her character, what she looked like, her personality, and with also some adjectives to describe her. Now today I want you to imagine that you are that character. So you're going to think about how she would have been feeling at different parts of the story. So there's three sentences we're going to write about three different parts of the story. The first one is where Lila is peeping out of the hut and you can just about see her in the picture in the book and she overhears what the grown-ups are discussing while they're talking about how terrible it is about the rain and what might happen to the village because obviously the grown-ups didn't want the children to hear those things. So how do you think she feels at that part of the story? How would you feel if you overheard that? So I think the main word that I thought of was worried. Remember, you drop the Y. And then we're going to be looking at some different words that mean a similar thing. So other words for worried. And to do that, we use a theosaurus, which is that book that's a bit like a dictionary and it is full of synonyms. So that's different words that mean similar things. So there's worried, and it tells you that it's an adjective. And so other words for worried, you could have anxious. She felt anxious, she felt concerned, she felt nervous, or even apprehensive. That's a good word. So you're going to choose one of those words for how she felt. Or you could write both of them, couldn't you? So I'm going to have... I feel worried and nervous. And then the next bit you're going to carry on that sentence with because. So why would you feel worried and nervous? I feel worried and nervous because the grown-ups say that the crops are going to die and then what will we have to eat? So you've got to finish that sentence. I feel worried and nervous because. So that's the first sentence we're going to do. Then I want you to think about this part of the story. So when she's at the very top of the mountain, she's already told this guy all the sad things she can think of and nothing has happened. So the first word you might think of is just writing sad. I feel sad. But there are lots of better words than just saying a sad, a bit like when we use the word big. And I always say there's so many better words than just saying big. So this is the Theosaurus page for sad. And let's see with the different words it comes up with. So we've got unhappy, upset, miserable, fed up, dejected. That's a good one. There's lots of words beginning with D that means sad. Despondent, depressed, gloomy, glum down in the dumps, disappointed. Now the last two I think are really good. We've got tearful and then we've got heartbroken. And I think heartbroken is quite a good one to use for that. Remember, you can choose whichever one you want. So I feel heartbroken. And what other one could we have? I feel heartbroken and... Tearful, because we know she was tearful because she cried, didn't she? I feel heartbroken and tearful because. 
So you have got to finish the sentence, why, when she's at the top of the mountain, does she feel heartbroken and tearful? She's done all that thing, she's made all that effort, she's climbed up that mountain, she's done everything she can and nothing has happened. So that's the next sentence you're going to do. You're going to explain how she was feeling at that point. And then the final one, sentence number three, is this part of the story, when it's finally started pouring with rain. So she's definitely happy. I feel happy. And just like sad, there's lots of different words for happy. And you have to choose the ones that most fit that part of the story. So we've got cheerful, contented. I think it's a lot more than contented, isn't it? Good humoured, that doesn't really work. Pleased, she is pleased. Glad, I think delighted is better. Thrilled is even better. And overjoyed is even better than that. They're sort of like in order, aren't they? Because content is a bit happy, but overjoyed is probably as happy as you can be. So I'm going to use overjoyed. I feel overjoyed. And I'm going to write a different type. I'm going to write and excited. So then you're going to have to answer why. I feel overjoyed and excited because... Finally, it has started raining. The village will be saved. The crops will start growing. So you've got to answer and carry on that sentence. So that's three different sentences about those three parts of the story.